it's time for another community Q&A, and if you're anything like me, you're going to want some fun facts about The Division that you can use to impress your friends and family around the dinner table, right? Okay, stick around. Last time we did this, we had questions that folks had sent in through video message on Skype, and we still have more of that coming up. But we saw this thread over on the Division subreddit, and we figured this would be a great opportunity to clear up some of the intricacies of rogue status that people experienced, and to be honest, we're a little bit confused by at E3. So basically, when players enter the dark zone, they're neutral by default. But as soon as they attack another player, they turn rogue. The way we do that is because we want the dark zone to be a place of cooperation first, but then if you attack someone, then you get flagged. You're attacking friendly forces. Rogue protocol initiated. When you turn rogue, you get a bounty on your head and all players can see it. And the more you kill, the bigger the bounty. You climb the levels of rogue by killing other players. And if you're level one rogue, you are rogue for two minutes. But if you kill more players, you are rogue for a long, longer period of time. Every time you kill a player, you refresh that counter and it increases up to five minutes. If you manage to survive your rogue status, which is pretty difficult because all players want to kill you, can see you on the map periodically. If you manage to do that, uh, then you receive your own bounty. So you can progress in the dark zone by being a rogue, but it's pretty risky and difficult. You lose a big amount of dark zone XP when you die as a rogue, and other players receive that dark zone XP. So that's one more incentive for neutral players to uh, hunt the rogues. If you're grouped up with someone, um, there's no way you can shoot them. There's no friendly fire enabled. If you want to leave the group and uh, fight your friends, there's a warning displayed to the whole group for a few seconds before you leave, so they have a chance, you know, to uh, brace for it and prepare. What's up, guys? Boomslang here. I had a couple questions for you guys concerning the Dark Zone. Uh, first off, is there any instance of PvP action outside of the Dark Zone? And also, Dark Zone or Dark Zones? Are there going to be more than one, or is there just one Dark Zone? I'd like to get that cleared up once and for all. Thanks! No, there is no PvP outside of the Dark Zone. Right. So just to be, make it extra clear for the players that when they enter the Dark Zone, they're entering PvP. There is a lot of PvE as well. But yeah, it's an area where players can enter and help each other out with PvE or end up fighting each other instead. Are you leaving? There is one Dark Zone. One super duper mega awesome Dark Zone in the middle of Manhattan. It's very big. What we saw in the E3 demo was just uh, a small area, a slice of the Dark Zone around Bryant Park. What's up guys, James here, the lead writer and developer on Division Blog, here to ask our friends at Massive Entertainment a quick question. Right now we know that the squad size within the Division is four players, however what we don't know is exactly how many players will be able to play together in the Dark Zone. Can you guys shed some light on this? Thanks. The demo that some of you have had the chance to play featured a 3v3v3 scenario, but in the game there will be many more players in the Dark Zone and you won't be locked into a specific group setup. The exact numbers of players that we will have in the Dark Zone is something that we have to decide and uh, we have to balance it by means of testing and player feedback from the beta in December. But will we have more than nine players? Hell yes. Thanks for the questions guys, but unlike last time, we're not done just yet. It's time for some rapid fire goodness, courtesy of our friends over on Twitter. Will we be able to find weapons and gear outside of the Dark Zone? Okay, Elvin, the answer to that is definitely yes. It's also worth noting that you can find best in slot gear both inside and outside of the Dark Zone. While there may be more of the good stuff inside the Dark Zone, you also have the risk of someone having you in their sights, so you've been warned. Cameron Lewis asks, will you be able to have just your loot extracted and then go looking for more? Yeah, that's exactly how it works. The extraction helicopter is only there to pick up your contaminated loot. So afterwards, you're free to fill up that loot bag as many times as you want, or find a way out of the dark zone if that's what you want to do. Where can I sign up and play the beta in the UK? This doesn't apply to just those of you in the UK, but you can still sign up by going to thedivisiongame.com slash beta and fill it. We'll throw a link down in the description below for you as well. We'd better wrap this thing up, but I promise we'll be doing this all again very soon. So what would you like to know? Are you curious about what you'll find in the collector's edition? Do you want to know what games devs play in their spare time? If I'm in the dark zone and I shoot my boss from work and take all his loot, how many muffins is sufficient for an apology? As always, you'll find us on Twitter, Facebook, the official forums, the Division subreddit, and you can still send those video messages into the Division game on Skype. Have a good one. We'll see you soon.